You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, and it's a special edition today, we're talking about rhinoplasty. What you need to know if you or a loved one is considering any type of rhinoplasty, facial plastic surgery, or chin implants. Uh, in fact, here's a sample of Dr. Greco's work. What many people don't know is that rhinoplasty, according to plastic surgeons, facial plastic surgeons, is one of the most technically demanding uh, artistic things that they do. And some people even say you have to get it right the first time. Well, with us, we have Philadelphia's go-to facial plastic surgeon and go-to rhinoplasty, uh, Dr. Greco. Dr. Greco, welcome to the program. Pleasure to be back, Randy. I should say welcome back. You know, we were in the green room and you're showing me photo after photo after photo. And I want people to know, I'm not siding with you or endorsing you on this program, but I told you, these are some, and I've had a lot of plastic surgeons on the show and they may not like that I'm saying this, but these are some of the best, if not the best rhinoplasties I've ever seen. It's very nice. I appreciate so, uh, that. And these are all on your website? They are. Because we probably won't be able to they get are. to all of them. I know you brought a stack of them and, yeah. and I hope they stay around for, to look at those. But for people that don't know you, you're a board certified facial plastic surgeon, board certified in ENT or otolaryngology. So who do you see? All you do is faces. Who's your typical patient? Typical patient, Randy, is uh, at the younger age group, it's patients that don't like their nose or they don't like their chin. Uh, the features of the nose that uh, patients don't like are the bridge being too high or having a hump. Uh, they don't like their nose. Uh, the tip of their nose in particular doesn't have definition that they okay. like it to be. Some feel that their nostrils flare too much. Uh, some of it may have had uh, been in an accident and they have a, a crooked nose now and that bothers them uh, aesthetically as well as functionally. Um, chin implants are also very popular in this age group because many times patients don't realize it, but when they come in for the consultation, they're looking at their nose. But when I take a profile picture of them and we start doing the video imaging on them, they start looking at the chin and they, and they see the improvement that can occur from you know augmenting the chin. Okay. As we go a little bit further up the scale, uh, aging scale, you know, we start getting into patients that are more interested in some of the minimally invasive, uh, uh, minimally invasive uh, uh, procedures. You know, the uh, fillers to help fill out lines. We're talking. We do a lot of volume now in in our uh, in uh, with minimally invasive procedures. Um, instead of chasing lines, we're now looking at putting volume into the face, which really helps to restore the volume that's being lost as the face okay, ages. Okay. Okay. And then, you know, when we start getting in in the 50s and 60s, we start getting into patients that really aren't going to benefit from the volume because of the skin envelope just is, um, unfortunately, has aged. It's lost its elasticity, and therefore, there are uh, procedures necessary to tighten that skin envelope. Now, 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 at the top of the show, we said you're the go-to facial plastic surgeon. You are known in Philadelphia for the natural looking facelift you know, as well. I mean, we've had you on the program yeah, before talking about that. One of the things I love to hear from okay. my patients, Randy, is when, I, when we see them uh, after surgery is over with, and I have their before and after pictures on the video imager, and they're looking, and they got that smile in their eye. <laughs> Every once in a while, you might see that little, you know, little collection of a tear in the corner of the eye, or the significant other is just smiling and really, you know, feeling uh, good for their partner. Um, they, they, they see the difference, and it's dramatic. Yet they tell me that you know their friends have, you know, don't recognize that they had actually any surgery done. So you done. could they do just, a facelift they, they, they and, can, and they, nobody would know, possibly? Yes. yes really? Absolutely. And what they do is they're, 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 some people are very, 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 you know, they're, they're very keen to that stuff. But a lot of people, a lot of my patients' friends just look at them and say, you know, you really look good or you just, you just don't seem to age. You know, you just, you just, <laughs> okay. you just really, really look good. And, uh, you know, uh, my job is to, you know, Make them have a youthful, uh, fresher, rested look and, and make sure that the incisions and everything like that heal very well so these patients can, you know, look good without looking like they've had something. So let's start with the, with the nose. Okay, so rhinoplasty. Uh, and I know you brought a lot of photos. Sure. Uh, so, so tell me what 
So this represents like typical patients you see all the time. Sure. Okay. Sure. So I, I want to show you uh, this patient here. Okay. This patient here is our uh, our first case, Randy, and what it does is it shows that. Uh, this patient is not pleased with the general shape of her nose. She had surgery done before. And the thing that's bothering her the most are several things. So for this particular patient, what she's concerned about is she has this hanging cayamella, or the bottom portion of the tip of the nose is hanging down too much. Okay. And this is going to only get worse. And that bothered her? On. It did. It did. Okay. And, and she also noticed that over the last several years, this was a progressive thing. So she was seeing it getting worse and worse and okay. worse. Okay. Now with that uh, was the bridge of her nose. The bridge of her nose is kind of deviated to one side, as you can see. Okay. And this was associated with the breathing problem. Okay. Now, I want you. To, I want to show you something. This is the after picture. Mm -hmm. And what I want you to do is, before you look at the nose, I want you to take a look at the eyes of the patient before and after. And tell me if you think that there is more of a an expression to the eyes afterwards. Yeah, that's a good point. Pretty, okay, so there's an old saying in our business, Randy, that I, I see all the time. Yeah. A good rhinoplasty is found in the eyes of the patient. Really? Uh, you know, just by making the nose more proportional with the rest of the face, the eyes become more prominent, and the, the, the beauty of the eyes become more prominent. The expression that the patient possesses probably is a reflection of some inner confidence, okay. inner, inner beauty that they feel. But a good rhinoplasty is found in the eyes of so the this, patient. So in her before, a little bit tilting to her right. Yep. Uh, that little tip here was falling, yep. so you just kind of picked that up, yep. redid you, that. Can you see that on the Yeah, zone, it, it is. It's subtle, yeah. Yeah. but it's good. But, but also you can see that the nose is straight, correct? Yes. And now she has a very good airway also. And this is so she know, can breathe out of it as well. Exactly. Okay. Now let me show you the profile to this patient. All right. All Even right. though I like the uh, front view, but the profile is really unique. Okay? okay. So this is the before patient. All right. And what you're seeing here is what happens with a lot of rhinoplasties that have been done. As time goes on, the tip of the nose becomes amorphous and a little bit bulbous. It, it just it kind of looks like. It just doesn't have that refinement, okay? Now, this is her afterwards. Now, when you take a look at it, their before and after picture, you can see now that she has a delicate tip to her nose. You can see that the uh, that portion that was hanging down in front is now providing yeah, for yeah. what we call a double break, okay? Usually on profile with rhinoplasty, Randy, you'd like to see the patient have a little bit of a double break. Uh, in, in this region. And what that does is it sets the nasal tip off that much more uh, beautifully. Okay. And I think you can see that yeah. we were able to ob obtain that uh, with this patient. The other thing was too, is she wanted to have a, a, a bridge of her nose that was a little less masculine. And I think we were able to also provide that for her too. This is a three quarter view, okay? And, and it's a very important view in rhinoplasty. And I'll tell you why, Randy, because what it does is- You can really see that tip in this photo. Yes. Yes. The, the tip is... Yeah, uh, not only that, but you can, not only can you see the tip, but you can see the position of the tip. Uh, you can see that we rotated it up a little bit. So, so subtle. Yeah, but that, you, you know, our game is a game of millimeters, you know? That's why uh, when my, my plastic surgery colleagues, when they're working on breasts and they're working on liposuction, they're looking at it in inches. My whole life is all about millimeters. I have to mention this because the, the 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 plastic surgeons that I meet, facial plastic surgeons I meet, some of them don't like doing rhinoplasty. Yeah, like they say, it's one of the most difficult things. But you love it. I I, I tr it's the it's the it's the funnest surgery that I do, and I'll tell you why, Randy, because each one is different. Uh, it's uh, you know my rhinoplasties are not cookie cutter. Is it true you almost have to get it right the first time? You try to do the best you can, okay. you know, but I mean, I, really, you know, when you're doing a good rhinoplasty, you really want to have a good di diagnostic plan. You should be able to look at a patient's pictures and after examining, examining the inside of their nose as well as the outside of their nose, you should be able to come up with uh, a, a, a picture in your mind 
of the architecture of this nose and how it needs to be changed okay. in order to get the result that we want. Really that comes from a lot of experience. I mean, you've done over a thousand of these. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of those things that you're right. I, I, I mean, but I will say this, every one, every rhinoplasty that I do, I learn a little something new every time I do one. And, okay, it's, and it's, you know, I, I never want to stop learning that. I always want to pick up on things, the new ones. Okay, here's a patient. Um, she comes in. Now, this would be a, a bulbous tip, okay? And you can see her after, and you can see how, so if you look at yeah. the before and after, you can see that, you know, this was, uh, that we were able to uh, reshape the tip of her nose. Now, this bulbous tip, Randy, um, I'm going to get a little technical on you okay. here, if you don't mind, okay? The cartilages to the nose, um, particularly the lower lateral cartilages, when a patient has a nice refined tip, the cartilages tend to go out this way. Okay. And they point to the lateral canthus. When patients have a bul bulbous nose to begin with, instead of this cartilage pointing here, it points up All right. to the medial canthus. By doing that, it causes this ball look. Now, here's her, here's her uh, um, before picture on, on the profile, and then here's her after. Oh, yeah. Had a little bit of a hump on the yep. ridge of the nose. But look at the definition in the tip. Yeah, the tip is different. Yeah. It's nice. But it's because we were able to move those cartilages. If somebody wants to have a nice refined tip, those cartilages have to be in the right position. What we did is we put them in the right position. Three-quarter view I really, really like. Because in this particular patient, what are you seeing when on the uh, before and you're seeing a dorsal hump, and you're seeing that um, ball to the nose. So the bulbous nose, yeah. and it doesn't look like a nose job. It doesn't. It doesn't. That's the. I'm case. not trying to side with you, but I. That's I, the case. Going into this today, because I knew we were talking about rhinoplasty, and I always think I always know what a nose job looks like. You said not mine. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> it's good. I I I, I, I tell patients what we're going to do is we're going to give you a nose that's going to make you look better feel better, function better, but, you know, uh, um, like the one commercial used to say, did she or didn't she? Or, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's kind of what we are for. Now, this gentleman here, you know, uh, trauma after um, he had an uh, injury to his nose. Yeah, totally different. And then, and then here is uh, his front view. Now, so. now, we should mention, you know, in the green room, you handed me papers to read, and people that you fix their nose... For some people, it was life changing. Yeah. And uh, at first, I'm thinking, well, I, you know, I don't know if I have to read this, but then, you know, these people are bleeding their guts, their heart. And one woman in the front seat of a car, she said that on a date, she was worried that her date was going to see her profile. Yes. So these people that come in, usually their nose has bothered them for many years before they get to you. Yep. Is that right? Yes, absolutely, Randy. And you know, I, one of the most common things I hear, um, and we also discussed this earlier, was. Uh, for patients that actually are going in, they're, they're going out to get some um, clothes. And they go into that situation where, you know, they got that three, the, the three quarter uh, mirror, you know what I mean? That yeah, the clothing. The, the clothing mirror, right? Yeah, that, yeah. that allows them to see it. Well, on that three quarter mirror, when they look to their right, they can see their profile because of the double reflection. And a lot of times, you know, it's funny. They, uh, I, I hear a, a lot of patients say they just step away and they keep on moving back until the only thing they're looking at is really? the front view, and that's it. You know what I mean? So one woman wrote me a letter one time. She goes, thank you for allowing me to rediscover the three-quarter mirror again <laughs> because she <laughs> nice. can now look at her profile and look at, and see what she wanted. Okay, so, good. Another uh, patient here um, with a, a dorsal hump, and I thought she had a, a, a pretty nice result, and then... If you look at her uh, befores here, you can see uh, this nose was kind of a long, thin nose, and I think we just gave her a little bit uh, more balance. This patient, Randy, is one of the um, classic patients that I'll see in my practice. This patient was graduating from high school and going into college. He was getting into a new social set. He had you know, lived with his nose during high school, and he was going off to college and he was going to um, do something, give him a little bit more confidence, a little bit more self-esteem and not have people say, you know, well, you know, uh, because usually a, 
a large dorsal hump, you know, people will say, hmm, something's, you know, a little bit different. So he didn't like that hump, the bump on his nose. Exactly. And, and but this is his after. And, and once again, I mean, wow. if, I mean, that's just a, you know, it's just a nice natural nose. Um, this is actually him four years later. So this is a four year follow up. Very interesting. Okay. Here he is on his front view and you can see the long, thin nose. But now he's got a nose that kind of has a little bit you know, nicer flow to it. You don't see the dorsal hump. The nasal tip is a little bit more, uh, you know, in line with the rest of the and nose. You, you know, when we look at the before, because we talked in the green room, like it, it, it's like having the big nose for this guy bothered him. Yes. He feels, you say, like other people are looking at him. And they may not be. Yes. But if it bothers you, do something about it. Yes, absolutely. And this, this guy's a good looking guy. Uh, I think he's a good looking yeah, guy, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and, you know, it's amazing how that comes through, you know what I mean? I mean, if you, if you look good, you feel good and vice versa. So I think this is, you know, where uh, rhinoplasty really comes in. Now, this is something I see a lot in my practice. All right. Deviated nose, wide dorsum, okay? Okay, just All a right? wide? Wide thing. So okay. this is her after. Very nice. Okay, so you can see that she's... Uh, the, uh, the the symmetry has uh, uh, been provided. This was her profile, and then she just wanted just a tad bit of a little bit of a set off, right? Yeah. But you see what you're seeing here? What you're seeing here, uh, rhinoplasty after rhinoplasty after rhinoplasty, is me trying to highlight the best features of the patient's face and not causing attention to the structure that was actually operated on. That to me, Randy, is the key to a good facial plastic surgeon. I can make a change in a face and the, the whole face looks is better. This, is rhinoplasty more art or science? It, it's, uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why I love this procedure so much, Randy, is because it's both. It's both. You have to understand, uh, particularly, it's science when it comes to function. You know, you have to understand that there's an internal nasal valve, there's an external nasal valve, there's uh, uh, the septal component to the breathing, uh, other things like that. And then the art comes into what you do to try and uh, show the, um, you know, have the before and after. Okay. Take a look at this gentleman here. Kind of a long protruding nose, okay? Now, what you see in this nose here, Randy, is two things. Number one, on the before picture, not only do you see an over-projecting nose, that nasal tip is over-projecting, but he also has a, a, a low dorsal hump, okay? Now, what I did for him uh, also was I did a very small chin implant in him because I didn't want to have to take his nose down too much and change the profile, uh, okay. profilimetry of his face. So what we did was we did a rhinoplasty, which you can see the difference there, where, and just a slight bit of a, a chin implant to just try and give him a little bit of strength to his chin. So he goes from a guy that probably everybody identified him as the guy with the nose. Right. To yeah. now it just kind of blends yes. into his face. That's and their whole it. life can change. For some people, you say that this is like a new beginning. This was really, this meant a lot to this gentleman. He really, he, he, he just, this meant a lot to him. He's a good looking guy. Really nice guy, a complete gentleman, and it, this was—it's neat to see this sort of you know, okay. that transformation. This uh, this is one of my favorite patients. Um, he's a great guy. He's a, uh, he used to play baseball in college, and we got along so well um, because the first thing we started doing during the consultation is talking about baseball. Do me a favor, take a look at the bridge of the nose. Okay, so right there. Yeah. Do you see how it's making a left hand turn? On like it looked like it was broken yeah. or something. Yeah, exactly. So this is something that bothered him uh, very much. And so this is uh, his after picture. You can see where he able to line him up better and get him uh, um, to uh, look uh, um, in be uh, better on the front view. This is his profile value, okay? So what I did was we gave him a little bit of a chin implant and did a little bit of submental liposuction to just give him a little bit of a cleaner jaw. And then it kind of blended uh, um, subtly but nicely with his nose. Nice. All right. Now, uh, this, this woman, uh, another patient that is near and dear to my heart, uh, comes to me, um, 
she wrote one of the letters that um, I had showed you. This is what we did for her afterwards. You can oh my see, goodness. Um, you can see the before and after there is just you know remarkable. I mean, it really does change her appearance. Yeah, she's a, she's not only a more confident uh, woman, she's a more attractive woman right now. And and it's, it's this is the gal that she yeah. said on this is the letter right right this yeah. is the girl attached to yeah. that letter yeah like yeah. even driving in a car yeah. right. on a date right she didn't want to sit side by side because they might see her profile yeah. right interesting and now she's just you know uh, she comes in and you can first of all there's a certain bounce in their step Randy <laughs> you know which is really cool after and it's then, all done and then, and then there's this before uh, in the initial consultation it's almost like you had to drag the smile out of them now they just volunteer the smile. smile all right take a look at this gentleman another uh, really super super nice guy okay there's that's an unusual nose right there that yeah that's this is, a, is. this is a revision okay uh, take a look at the three-quarter view. It looks like he's just uh, thing, and then take a look at his profile view, where the nose is just you know. Okay. So okay. And it really so, bugged this guy. Oh, and not only that, this he's this guy's an athlete, and each week that was going by, he was having much more difficulty with running and getting air. He couldn't for his breathe through his nose very well. Each okay. you know, and it, it got worse and worse and worse. So take a look at his front view uh, oh, that you have there. Oh my goodness. Totally different. Amazing, isn't it? I mean, you know, he's a handsome guy, but obviously this adds to the attractiveness. No question about it. No question about it. And he's in a very, you know, here's a three-quarter view. Take a look at the three-quarter view. Whoa. The guy's got to be happy about that. Yeah. Profile. And then the last one will be the tip, uh, the, the nasal tip. This is uh, another revision rhinoplasty, okay? So, so that she, means that they got a, a the, nasal the, the, rhinoplasty the, nose job somewhere else? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Okay. She came to me because she didn't like her tip, Okay. And the other thing she didn't like was on profile, she just felt that her nasal tip was a little bit bulbous. There wasn't definition to it. Here's her um, after view. If you notice, these indentations here are no longer there. Oh yeah, yeah, so it was a little squeezed at the yeah. tip. You see the pinched look is, is the pinched look is gone. Do you see it? Yeah, yeah. Now, look at her profile. Now, see how we were able to give her a little bit of uh, uh, definition to the tip of the nose, and that was just through uh, what we call a shield graft, which is a, a graft of cartilage that I placed here. And what that did is it just gave her, if you look at the uh, before and after, you can see that looks a little bit wider at the tip, mm -hmm. but here it looks more refined. Now, we are really short on time. A couple of minutes left. The chin. Yes. You brought some photos of the chin, and yes. you say they go together. Rhinoplasty and chin. Absolutely, Randy. What we're talking about is profilimetry or the profile okay. aspect of the face, okay? So Leonardo da Vinci uh, divided the face up into thirds, you know, the forehead and then from the uh, glabella to the subnasality or nasolabial angle and then from the nasolabial angle to the, um, okay. to the bottom of the chin. They should be equal, okay? Sometimes when patients come in and they have a large nose, there is a, an associated weakness in the chin. So if the chin's too far back, the nose appears exactly to right. be bigger. There's an inverse relationship, right? Okay. So if if I bring the, if I bring the nose back, the chin looks like it's uh, projecting more. If I take the chin back, the nose looks like it's okay. More. All right. Okay. So let's go with uh, let's go with this patient here first. I think she's a she's a remarkable result. This was another letter that you had read that where there's is this called a weak chin? Is yes. that what that is? Yes. Okay. This weak chin or retronathia. Okay. okay, which is usually associated with, with only you guys call it that, which right? Which is associated with a class two occlusion. It usually means they have a uh, overbite. Okay. Okay? okay, now this is this patient, and you read one of her letters, and she was a patient who just you know uh, she had mentioned I think something about Kermit the Frog. Somebody you know, called her Kermit the Frog yeah, exactly, because she had no chin. Because she had no chin. Terrible. Now you can see her after. Wow. And, and this is you know this is pretty remarkable. Just with the chin. Yeah. Now. Take a look at her lips, though. Look, look at look at this is what I call collateral um, uh, improvement, where you can do a, a chin augmentation, and that's all you do. But look at her cervical mental angle. Doesn't her right here? Doesn't that look a little sharper? Yeah, her her, her, her neck looks more chiseled. Yeah, it, it looks, was that lipo? No, just that was by, just, the, just chin by the implant. Yes. Now that other view. Take a look. I mean, that's you can a, see a, amazing. A, yeah. Now you really see the benefit of what that looks like. Okay, so this gentleman, um, uh, 
you can see, comes in, has an extremely weak chin, and has a, a submental adiposity. So, what does that mean? So it just has fat underneath her chin. Okay. 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 So, you know, and unfortunately, the fat underneath the chin is genetically determined, and it's also uh, fat, Randy, that is difficult to remove with um, diet and exercise. So here's your before and after here. Gave him a nice chin. Wow. Gave him a nice chin implant. Okay. Give him that strong anterior projection, and then the submental liposuction. And now, I mean, the guy looks like a handsome guy now. I mean, I think it really helped to improve his uh, profile yeah, really nicely. Yeah, yeah. All right. Last one I'll show you um, is a, a sweet woman that came to me who just never, ever liked her chin. She thought her lips were too uh, large for her face. And what we did is we gave her a chin implant. And that's the only thing we did. Now... Take, it's like her face has been pulled in, yeah, almost, exactly. on the profile. Exactly. But, but, but take a look at the proportion of the rest of the structures of her face in relation to what she had before and what she had after. This is what I mean by collateral, uh, um, uh, a positive collateral effect. That so means you, you did this and it affected other parts of the exactly. face. Exactly. Exactly. Interesting. And that's what's neat about So chin combined with rhinoplasty. A very, a very strong combination that can give patients um, a sense of self-confidence um, no matter which angle they're being looked at, uh, no matter what mirror they're being seen in. Because that's the party shot. I mean, when you're at a party, everybody's looking at you from the profile. <laughs> that's what it is. I think you called it the party shot. Yeah, you're right. So when you fix that, yeah, it, yeah, it does. It, it, it completely changes. So they're thrilled. When it's all done... They just, uh, it's, it's a real, you, you can really, you can really make a dramatic change in a patient's appearance and, and in their psyche. What's the downtime? I mean, if everything goes great, how soon could you return to work? Like, like with a chin? Ten day, uh, with a chin, probably about seven days. So like take a week off. Yep. You, you but some do. people go back to work earlier. They do. They yeah. do. You know, I always ask patients, Randy, if they have a behind the scenes job, they can get back as soon as they want. Okay. Great stuff. All this is on your website. I want yes. to thank you for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure. So Randy. final message, if you don't like your chin, weak chin, your nose, come in for a consultation. Absolutely. And you're going to show them imaging We're in advance what it's going to look like. And let me tell you something. Video imaging, particularly when it comes to the profile of a patient's face, is so helpful to the patient to get a good appreciation for what, they, what, the, what they'll look like. And a lot of times we might not even end up doing a little liposuction. On the too. neck. All right. I want to thank you for coming to the show. Great stuff. Great. We appreciate, appreciate you having me here. You've been watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you could help. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.